Oh, there he is. Started getting taps, so I'm gonna slowly reel up. If I start losing taps, there he is again. Yep. This thing is just loaded with crappie right now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video. It is hot, it's August. What do you expect? Dog days of summer. And today I thought I'd talk about how to set up on brush piles. Uh, we don't have a ton of wind today, but we are on a river system, so we do have current. And being able to set up properly on a brush pile, it really is key to be able to cast certain directions and trigger some bites. So in order to set up on the brush pile, first we gotta find the brush pile. So I'm gonna be showing you how I'm using side imaging to locate these brush piles. Actually, it's probably gonna be a lay down. This river system gets a ton of flooded timber in the springtime and they get stacked up in kind of the, the current seams, the backwater current seams uh, behind sandbars, any type of rock point that sticks out. So we're gonna be going down river here, trying to find uh, a lay down, hopefully loaded with crappie. So once we find our brush pile, we're gonna throw out a buoy marker and it's super important to give, be as accurate as possible. You might wanna to go to down imaging or 2D sonar, get right below or get your transducer right above the brush pile or the lay down that you're trying to mark. Uh, because that's going to make for really accurate casts. So the more accurate you can make that buoy marker, uh, the more accurate you can start casting around it. So I'm going to go ahead and run downstream here, find a lay down or a brush pile that's hopefully loaded with crappie, and uh, we'll start positioning the boat and talking through that. So as you guys can see on that side imaging sonar, the recording, there are a ton of fish. There's still a ton of fish below the boat right now. Just using mapping and 2D sonar, a lot of you probably have this on your boat, um, either on the bow of the boat or, you know, on this transom. Threw out a marker buoy. I actually went over it, threw down 2D sonar like this, went right over top of it and dropped that marker buoy. And when that, this is, I think it's just a big lay down, was directly below my transducer. And that's, you want to be as accurate as possible because that's going to make your, your cast very, very accurate. I'm actually facing downstream right now because I'm fishing behind a sandbar and the main current pushes out around the sandbar but then it creates this eddy on the back side of the sandbar which is pretty much where you're going to find a lot of these laydowns uh, during the spring floods. A lot of them get pushed down river and as the water recedes or the water levels recede these laydowns settle behind these sandbars. And so now we're actually facing downstream because that's where the, this eddy current is actually pushing back into us. So we're just going to pitch around this buoy marker here. And I have a eighth ounce jig tied on with a little crappie monster small fry. Oh, there was a tap. Oh, Got to make sure you set your drag. There's a tap. Oh, one thing I do want to mention, because you got to be considerate about fall rate. So right now, I think it's about 14 feet, but a good way to a good way to figure out your fall rate is take the jig, put it the length of your rod. Okay, this is a seven and a half foot rod. We're gonna have to go about a half half foot shy, make it an even seven feet. You're gonna drop the jig down, and you're gonna drop the rod tip directly above the surface of the water. And however long it takes for that line to get tight, that's your fall rate. So. We're gonna count here. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. About three, three and a half seconds it took for that jig to fall to where the line was tight. And so that means it falls seven feet every three seconds roughly. So this gives you an idea of like how, how long you need to count and how long you need to wait for that jig to fall down. Um, if you don't got any forward looking sonar, just count in your head. I'm fishing in 10, 11 feet of water here. I want to stay above that brush pile. There's two approaches you can do this. You can stay back and cast at it. Oh, there he is. There he is again. Come on. There he is. Got him. Stay back and cast at it. And, oh, yeah, there's a good crappie. And you either just let it pendulum back towards the boat to catch some crappie for the live well, or you can do the countdown method where you're letting it just open the bale up, let it drop down to what the depth you want to fish at. I'm going to throw him in the live well. And then slowly reel it up and then pause it. I'll talk about this in a second. Let's get back to the live well here. It's hard to focus when you're dealing with a fish, but there's two methods you can use when, you know, fishing a brush pile like this or a lay down. 
The first is like I was doing, you're pitching it out, then you're closing the bale and you're letting that jig swing back and pendulum back towards the boat. Typically uh, aggressive crappie. We got bluebird skies, it's pretty warm out today. They're actually fairly aggressive right now and they're, they're just keying in on these baits as little bait fish swimming by. And so that pendulum is imitating a, a bait fish just kind of cruising by. So that's one approach. The second approach, if we can get up to it again, actually we can do it right now. You're gonna cast out behind, always cast beyond that brush pile. And I'm gonna leave my bale open. I know I shut it there, but we're gonna leave it open. And I'm gonna count down about six seconds. It's gonna get me pretty close to the bottom. Then I'll close it. And I'm gonna reel up and then I'm gonna pause it and let it drop back down. Reel up, pause it, let it drop back down. There's a tap again, come on. If you start getting taps, slowly reel up because, come on dude. There he is. Because crappie like to feed upwards. So if you start getting taps, keep reeling just slowly. This is a little guy. We're gonna get him back. But if you start to feel taps, that means you're right in line with the strike zone. If you keep rising up, those crappie are gonna keep feeding up like that. My personal preference is just pitching it out beyond that brush pile, closing that bale and just letting that jig swing through them. Um, using 10 pound braid right now, straight braid super sensitive setup as it pendulums them back if it ever goes slack line reel up you either hit the bottom oh there he is start getting taps so i'm going to slowly reel up if i start losing taps there he is again yep this thing is just loaded with crappie right now come here buddy these aren't these aren't the river fish that i'm expecting out of here typically you can get in some 11 12 inch fish I mean, he's, he's a chunky nine. Let's throw him on the bump board real quick. There's no size limit on the river, but. Oh, he's a nine and a quarter. Look at that, nine and a quarter. Chunky little nine inch river crappie. Throw him in the live real quick. So those two approaches, pitching out, let it pendulum back to the boat or casting it, open bail, let it get down to the, worth, the depth that you think they're at. And then basically you're slowly reeling it up, letting the jig drop back down, reel up again. Now the other thing you could be doing is throwing up a waypoint. The problem with using a waypoint, it, it doesn't really give you a pinpoint accurate way or like a, something to look at as you're casting. Whereas that buoy marker, it's, it's right there and you know exactly where you're casting in relation to that buoy, which you should have been pretty accurate in where you dropped it. That's why it's so key to make sure you're right over the top of these brush piles when you're dropping buoys. Oh, there he is, yep. Subtle taps, this might be a decent fish. Unless I hooked him funny. Uh, he might've been just deeper in the water column, but he choked it though. Chartreuse jig with a clear body. This is the monster milk. Uh, crappie monster makes this pattern these monster milk patterns that there's a few different companies that make them but they uh, they work really well this time of year August there's a ton of bait fish in the system and that's what these crappie are feeding on if you can convince a crappie to hit a plastic versus a live minnow whether it's a shiner or a shad or something you've done a pretty good job at catching some fish outsmarting those crappie let's get back down there catch some more all right, one last pitch. Main keys, use your side imaging. Side imaging is super important. That's why I never really recommend, uh, even if you're gonna buy a used unit, you only got like 300 bucks, find an old model with side imaging capability. Crappie fishing, side imaging, it's that's, get really, really needed if you're gonna, if you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars on a sonar unit, get something with side imaging, even if it's a used two, three, four, five year old unit. Be sure to mark those laydowns and those brush piles with it. Use your buoy marker, even though you're probably going to give away your spot a little bit as people drive by, but dropping that buoy marker exactly on top of that laydown. This tree is actually sitting like this. I'm getting snagged on the tree up here. It's just sitting like this right now. And dropping that buoy exactly on that tree. So important when you don't really have any forward looking sonar, you got something to cast at consistently. I personally believe it's a lot more efficient than just dropping a waypoint. And then boat control. Right now I got both the current and the wind pushing right into the nose of the boat. I'm using an anchor lock function right now because the, both the current and the wind's put, pushing directly into the bow of the boat. 
It's keeping me pretty much in line with this tree. I'm just trying to drag my jig along the edge of it here. I don't know, the wind picked up and the bike kind of shut off here, which typically doesn't happen. Typically it's the other way around. Wind picks up, bike turns on, but for whatever reason, I have not got a bite here for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna try to catch another fish here for the live well and should be plenty for dinner. That's eh, four fish. I'll probably try to catch a couple more. I'm gonna run into a few different spots, but appreciate you watching as always. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. All right, if I catch a fish, I'll be sure to add it. Otherwise, good luck on the water. Hope this helps when you're setting up on brush piles in current and in wind. Go catch some crappie this summer.